everybody. Today I got an unboxing of a action cam that I bought. Um, it's the SJ Cam M10 version. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of SJ Cam footage and unboxings and reviews, but it's mostly the SJ Cam 4000. The 4000 is the one that looks like a GoPro. It's got that same rectangular form factor. And I don't know, I just, I thought since they have another option, I'll try the other option. Um, from what I understand, the internals of this camera are exactly the same as the SJ4000. Um, SJ4000 is pretty well regarded as a decent camera. Uh, similar in quality maybe to like a GoPro, uh, the Hero 2 or the Hero 3 white edition you know the lower spec GoPros. Um, main benefit is just that this is so much less expensive than a GoPro. Um, we're gonna be taking some trips later in the year so I thought yeah you know it'd be cool to have a little little camera uh, something that could be waterproof um, ha handle being taken outside and beat up a little more than the camera that we're recording on here uh, so decided, you know, for $79, it's worth a shot, you know, uh, GoPro's like $399 or, or something, so, uh, again, this is the SJ Cam M10, oh, I got a helper, um, excuse me, kitty, come on, you watch from over here, sorry about that, um, so this is the M10, um, SJ Cam, as you said. There's a lot of fakes out there, but I haven't seen any fakes of the M10 style, and you'll see when we unbox it, the, the form factor. There are, uh, I mean, SJ Cam, you could say, is knocking off the GoPro form factor, but SJ Cam's getting so popular uh, and, and kind of well-known that there's even knockoffs of the knockoff now. So, uh, But this one hasn't been knocked off as, as much uh, at all that I have seen. Um, so 1080p has H.264 encoding. Um, they do make a Wi-Fi version. I did not get the Wi-Fi version, but uh, if you needed, if you had the Wi-Fi version and you needed the app, you could just do a little QR scan and get right to the app. Um, so 30 meters water resistant when it's in the case. One cool benefit is that this one's going to have a, a screen on the back of it, so you can frame your shots using that. Um, here's the spec sheet real quick in case anybody wants to see those. Uh, we'll just leave that on the screen and if you really care to read all of this stuff you can pause the video. Um, you know, basic action cam stuff. Here's all the uh, included accessories. We'll pull those out in just a second. Multi-purpose, yeah, basically use it whatever you want for it. It looks like they forgot to indicate that it's without Wi-Fi. Um, iOS and Android. So, cool. Let's open this thing up. So, everything just comes in the tub. Number one most important thing is the camera. See it comes in a nice little waterproof case just like you'd expect from a GoPro. So the camera's inside here. Uh, one key thing to keep in mind when you if you buy these kind of things is the lenses and the, all the glass and stuff is usually covered with a little protector so make sure you look carefully for that. You can see the little pull tab right down here in the corner. Look for those and pull them off because if you don't take them off you may end up with a less perfect uh, less cl less perfect clarity or quality of shot and you're thinking like what the heck's going on and it's just you forgot to pull those things off uh, also be careful there might be one on the inside of this too so we'll check it out in a second so a uh, little lock on the latch there lift up that opens it right. camera slides out and I'm trying to look in there uh, I don't see one. I don't see one, so I think the inside's clean as far as one of those uh, 
protectors are, but there's one here on the back too. A little tab right there, so we'll go ahead and pull that off. All right, we'll pull off this other one later. Um, as far as the mounting style, these are all you know GoPro style clips. And in fact, if you have any GoPro accessories, um, the mounting bases and the clips, they're they're pretty much interchangeable. They will fit. They will fit one another. Um, there's like a half a millimeter or less difference in size, but it just means it's going to be a, a tighter, tighter fit. So they will work together if you have any of those in uh, for whatever other reason. Uh, this is bugging me. I'm actually going to go ahead and pull this off now so I don't forget. Uh, there we go. Pull that off too. Okay, cool. So waterproof case. Sorry for bump there. Camera itself. Check the lens. Make sure if it's got one of those protectors on there. I don't see it. There is one on the back though. Okay. So we'll go over go over this in just a minute. Let's see what else we got here. Uh, bicycle handlebar mount. Uh, GoPro mount kind of thing here. So it's got the little we'll just pull all these out of each bag as we as we go. Um, so typical little GoPro mounting adapter. I believe they refer to this as like a J-hook. Probably multiple size J-hooks there. Uh, this one, oh, okay, this is a um, like naked holder. So you sl slide this thing in here. Okay, and it's got a clip on the back of it. And the clip has like the GoPro style. Wow the GoPro style clip so you could have it mounted that way or come up from the bottom depending on what you want to clip onto that's handy and then when the clip is out you can see the screen so that's cool that's that's really handy here's another adapter let's see what this would look like so this looks like a tripod adapter yeah it's got the quarter inch screw um, and a little wheel for tightening so thread that in there where you want and then tighten up that wheel and that's gonna lock it in place there at whatever angle you set that guy to that's cool uh, what do we got here looks like another little So many choices. Sometimes, depending on what you're mounting this onto, you got to have a variety of sizes. So this would be, I guess, a small little. Um, I know these go with the J clips, right? Uh, probably, I don't know. These wiggle together here, and then you'd run a bolt through that, give you some more positioning. Uh, what else we got? Oh, okay. USB cable. Um, so typical cell phone, micro USB, standard USB for the computer. So this would be for transferring files to and from the camera to the computer. I uh, got some sticky mounts here. Sticky mounts. All right. Let's see. So yeah, it looks like one of them is curved and one of them is flat and it's even got the hole in there too so maybe you could use that with the tripod quarter inch adapter um, here's another I don't know what you want to call it, elbow so kind of the same principle as this one but you can see that not only is it longer but it's also got a different orientation. Uh, looks like some sort of strap. So straps, I should say, multiple straps. Um, yeah. Um, they are not elastic, so they don't really move at all. Oh, but they do have kind of a hinged clasp, so you would run it through there and. I guess clip it down when it's at the right 
size for your arm, maybe? Arm. And I think I see that you could probably, you might be able to run it through these slots, like through here, underneath, and over. And the other one, the other one has those slots too. So, two of those straps. Cleaning cloth, very nice. You're going to get things dirty. You're going to get things grimy, so nice little microfiber cleaning cloth. Another little elbow type deal. Super tiny on this one. Um, so again, the orientation there is 90 degrees offset, so it's more like that really, the larger one that we saw here, but it's just a, just a short version. Uh, replacement back door for the case. So the case it came shipped in was the waterproof case, um, which uh, when you have that closed up, that's going to limit your sound, but it's giving you the waterproof. Uh, this one is open. It's got slots on either side. So perhaps that'll offer you some protection, but also uh, let the sound come through a little better. This, of course, uh, when you swap this over, you are no longer waterproof. Uh, some additional 3M sticky pads. The manual. Uh, showing all, okay, Russian. So multi languages in here. Okay, so we have English up front. Um, operating the camera, waterproof design. Okay. I mean, I think this is going to be pretty intuitive on how to how to get things going, but at least there's a, a book for you. Uh, several languages. What is this? Oh, good lord, some stickers. All right. If you want to, well, this this kind of looks like it was just printed on label paper that you get at the office supply store. <laughs> yeah, okay. So, anyway, let's put all this aside. And look at the camera. So we'll pull this guy back out of here. Oops. I've already turned it on by accident. There we go. All right, well, it's not going to fall out of there anyway. Let's do that again. Let's do that again. We'll look at the buttons and everything first. So SG Cam 1080p. You can see it's a nice, cool little square. Not exactly a cube. Looks like it's longer in this dimension than in the depth. Um, you got your USB port, micro HDMI connector, um, did not come with that, so you have to get that yourself. Uh, speaker there, and then that's where your memory card's going to go. On the bottom, you've got your battery door. Okay, no batteries inside there. Um, only came with one battery. Batteries are very cheap, especially on eBay. I can see them all day long going really cheap. Uh, there's your screen of course nothing else there so battery door on top your power and mode button to toggle between picture video and hold it for uh, power off this will be your begin recording or take a photo button I believe it's also how you enter your selections when you're in the menu uh, dedicated menu button and then up and down go takes you through the menu items, little hole there for your microphone. All right. Let's go ahead and power this up. All right, so you can see a little bit there. Hopefully that'll pick up. Uh, it's got the correct date somehow, correct time. About halfway battery shows our mic is on. It looks like we're in three minute segments there. Three minute loop recording is what it's set to. And I don't know if it can be, if you can make it out there between the timer and the three minute loop, but that film section there, it does say 1080p 30. So that's how we're recording. Um, right there, it does say HDR. So we'll come back in just a minute and go through the menu structure. Alright, so now we'll take a look at the uh, 
menu structure I went ahead and loaded a card in here uh, keep in mind that it's only going to take a 32 gigabyte card at maximum All right, so let's turn this on getting the photos there or the uh, pictures now that I've got a card in there you can see it has an estimated recording time at the current uh, current settings 1080p 30 so to start recording we would just hit the red dot there okay so now we're recording the lights blinking our LED on top is also blinking to show us we're recording stop recording we just hit the same button okay uh, also says mode so we're gonna hit that once now we should be in picture mode and you can see it's telling us we're at 12 12 megapixels uh, auto white balance ISO auto uh, double star some little probably some anti handshaking there double star might refer to quality we'll find out in a minute um, and the number of pictures that we could take on this card so again to take pictures we would just hit that button there's one there's another all right and then uh, hit it again and we were in playback mode so that's showing the last picture that we looked at or that we took maybe these uh, arrow keys on the side will cycle through yes they do go backwards here's our movie suppose if I wanted to play it here I would just hit the enter key yep there we go you can see it's playing what we recorded earlier uh, let's turn up the volume oh that's fast forward sorry let's do that again let's hit play And if I hold the up and down keys here, hit that once, and there's our little fast forward. All right, let's get out of here and go back to mode again. Now we should be probably back in record. Yeah, record video. All right, so let's take a look at the menu. Hit the M there. All right, so we've got uh, six pages of settings. So I'm going to use the arrow keys. Down, we got resolution. Enter, we can do 1080p 30, 720p at 60, at 30, and 848 by 480. Uh, if, so this is just like the SJ4000. The 60 frames a second is not a true 60 frames per second. It's 30 frames with every frame doubled. So it's kind of worthless. Um, cyclic recording off three minutes five minutes ten minutes so I think this is how long your clips are gonna be um, I'm gonna set that to off actually because I just I'm not gonna use this as like a dash cam or anything so I want it to be as long as it's recording you know um, HDR that's set to on so of course that'll give a little bit better picture motion detection is gonna start recording when it detects motion in front of it so we're going to leave that to off. Audio. Uh, I guess this would be if the mic is on or not. So we'll leave it on. Date stamp on or off on your recorded video. I'm going to actually turn that to off. Okay, second page. Capture mode for photos. You can do a single or timed. So this would be good for time lapse. You can do 5, 10, 15, 20. I'm sorry, 5, 10, 20. We'll leave it on single mode. Image size, 10, 12 megapixels, 10, 8, and so forth. So we'll leave it on 12 for now. Not really going to be taking photos with this. Quality of those pictures. Okay, this would relate to those two stars we saw. So that was normal, fine. We'll go ahead and set it on fine. Not going to really be using it anyway. So maybe that's going to look at three stars or something. Uh, sharpness, normal, strong, or soft. We'll leave it on normal for now, see how that works out. White balance set to auto. You can also do 
daylight, cloudy, tungsten, or fluorescent. So depending on how your colors come out, especially when you're outside um, on a bright sunny day, usually everything works out well, but maybe on an overcast day you might want to set to cloudy. It's, it's going to make a difference on how your colors turn out. We'll leave it to auto for now. Colors. Okay, so you have just some color options. Full color, black and white, or sepia. Uh, page 3, ISO, auto, 100, 200, 400. That's it. Leave it on auto. Exposures. So we're at plus a third right now. I think zero would have been truly uh, out of the box. And then minus minus one, four thirds, five thirds, all the way to minus two, so probably also the plus two, right? Okay, so let's, whoops, put it back to zero for now. Face detection, I don't think this is probably during uh, photo mode. Face or smile detection, no, we're gonna leave that off for now. Anti-shaking, well, I'll turn it on, see what happens. Quick review. Okay, so how long the screen stays on after you take a photo. Uh, I guess we can leave it on for two seconds. Date stamps on photos. Date, date time. I'll turn that to off. Languages, what do you get? English, French, Spanish, Polish, German, Italian, and several. Asian languages, Russian, some more Asian languages, uh, I'm not sure about that one, and Portuguese, nice broad array of choices. Set the date and time, yeah, we'll come back to that. Auto power off, so I guess this would be if you're not doing anything after 3 minutes, 5 minutes, 10 minutes, it'll just shut itself off. Might be good if you've accidentally somehow turned it on, so we'll leave it and we'll go to 3 minutes. Beep sounds on and off for all these button presses I'm doing. Uh, let's go ahead and leave it on. It's not that annoying. TV out. So you can turn TV out on or off. I'm not going to connect this to a TV, so I'm not going to leave it off. But the TV modes you have, NTSC or PAL. We would want NTSC here in America. So we'll choose that guy. Screen savers. Okay, so this would turn the screen off while you're using it and that's going to be good for saving battery life so I'm going to set that to one minute because I don't really need to be looking at the screen all the time while I'm using it um, your frequency 50 Hertz for PAL countries uh, 60 Hertz for NTSC countries so we'll leave it at 60 rotate you so this would be if you're going to have to use it in an upside down configuration we'll leave that at off we want it normal car mode so this can be used as a car dash cam um, I'll have to experiment with that. I don't know if it'll auto uh, auto record when you just apply power if you've turned on car mode. Um, so I'll I'll play with that and uh, maybe do an update to the video let you know what we find out. But I'm gonna leave it off for now. Uh, on screen display mode, that would probably be all the information around the perimeter of the screen when you're using it. It's good to see for the minute. I mean we have the screensaver turned on, so it's gonna all go off at the same time even though it's powered on so we're gonna leave that to on uh, license number set okay so that has to do with the car mode you could pro if you want to put your car license number in there while you're um, using it as the car um, the car dash cam that would probably show up on the on the uh, bottom of the screen uh, we're not going to do that but it's good to know it's there Final page delete. So that would delete everything on the card. Delete current, delete all. Uh, yeah, so this would be, I guess you, you can't really, hey, cat. Sorry about that. Um, you can't delete the clip as we were in playback mode. There was no way to just delete it right from there. So you'd have to come back in here, delete the one you were watching, or delete all the clips on there. Uh, let's cancel this. Format. It's going to format the card. Uh, you know, you want to do that. Um, sometimes these might use a different file system than what your computer is using. Um, sure they'll be compatible, but you you might run into issues. So it's always best to, once you put the card in, let the camera 
format the card the way it likes it to be done. So I'm going to go ahead and do that real quick here. It's a brand new card. I don't have anything on it. All right, default setting would revert everything back to defaults. And version, currently we are running the, what's this, uh, December 22nd version 1 build from 2014. Probably will want to go online to SJCAM website and see if there's a new firmware for this. So that's the menu. Uh, next step is going to be get some clips filmed on this and uh, roll those into this video so you can see the uh, the various quality differences at the at various settings. So we'll try some of those exposure settings. Um, the white balance settings and see what makes a difference, what's good, what's bad uh, in different uh, lighting conditions. So there's there's a lot of those online and the, like I said this is the guts of this are the same as the SJ4000 so it's gonna, gonna should, should come out pretty much exactly the same but uh, we'll put some of those in there anyway see how things go. Alright so Thanks for watching thus far. If you want to see some qual some video quality clips, then keep watching. We'll roll those in right after this. Thanks. Yeah. Ooh. Ooh. What about you? What do you have to say? Oh. <laughs> and what about you? You're the little troublemaker. about your brother. Hey. Hey, Red Dude. Hey. All right, so this is inside footage, auto white balance, uh, standard settings, everything default. It's intended for humans. Apparently they have a human poop problem at this bike path. The public works supervisor there in Hampton says animals don't carry toilet paper, then stuff it on top. If you're gonna go to the trouble of using toilet paper, you're gonna have to poop into a toilet. You can't you can't leave it on the path. If it's a do-or-die situation and you've got to go, you don't have toilet paper on you. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm assuming. Uh, it's a two-year-long problem. They call it a two-year-long human poop plague. It's happening right in the middle of the town's scenic and popular bike path. There are public washrooms nearby. The motivation remains a mystery. They say we've got enough goose crap on the bike path, let alone humans. The culprit has enough forethought to bring that roll of toilet paper out on the path, they say, and yet can't make it to the nearby commode. 
bikers and runners in the small town use this path all the time. It's just right next to the Mississippi. They've noticed the new sign. It says, yes, stop pooping on the bike path. And because they're Midwesterners and they don't want to be too harsh, they have the smiling poo emoji with, a, with an X through it on the sign. The little poop guy. How cute is that? All right, coming up next, the rest of the top 10 first world problems like poop on a path. Sunday's just getting paid by AM reporting Melissa. What's going down? So here's just a test of some regular talking while in the car. Not talking extra loud or anything. This is exactly how I would be talking if someone was sitting here with me. Road noise. Yeah, doing almost 70 miles an hour in the lifted truck. So road noise, wind noise. This gives you an idea of the microphone ability in other clips that filled already. It seems the microphone is kind of black. Not very not very sensitive or powerful. If you want to be able to hear it once you've edited the footage, you have to most likely you have to boost the volume of, of that clip. Mostly I like this camera. It seems the microphone is really the only downside. Um, it's not the highest quality camera, of course, but it's also only $79 from sjcam.com. That's where I purchased it. You can get them on eBay. You can get them on Amazon. You can get them on Banggood. You can probably get them on AliExpress, that kind of stuff. This was $79 for the full kit. So, like you saw earlier in the review, all all that stuff. They make a they make a basic model that is uh, the camera and that open clip and like the USB cord. Some you know very minimal accessories, and that one is even cheaper. I think that one's like $62. And then you have the. Uh, the Wi-Fi version. Wi-Fi version is 102 from what I've seen on uh, sjcam.com. So you have some choices. I didn't get the Wi-Fi just thinking it's got a screen on it already. Having having the Wi-Fi option, you know, would make it handy probably easier to do the settings on the camera but it's really not that difficult to set them up or just to do the settings anyway because this one has the menu button it's you got up and down arrows a select key and a menu key that that's like your back button it's super simple by itself so I didn't I didn't want to take the battery life penalty of turning on Wi-Fi and connecting to that network with my cell phone and everything so so anyway to wrap up um, I'd say this is a good camera at least a starter camera if you're thinking about getting an action camera and you don't know if you want to spend 300 400 500 dollars on the various types of GoPros I mean they had they do have that 129 GoPro um, that's probably about the same video quality that you're going to get with this camera is equal to that uh, basic GoPro but the downsides of that GoPro are it's like it's the the waterproof case and the GoPro is one and the same you can't take anything out of there there's there's no removable but well, I'm sorry there is a removable battery but 
you can't, uh, if the lens gets cracked or something, that's it. You gotta go buy a whole new one or spend money to repair it. Um, and this one's even cheaper than that. I mean, that GoPro is $130 for the basic one. This one's $79. This one is $62 if you go for the basic model. So if you're not sure if you want to get into all of that stuff, this is a good way to go as a starter. Low price, decent quality. So I would recommend it just as you probably hear right now, the, the audio is not the best. 